So another one that we have is Wilkinson versus Downtown. So this case is uh, from Law of Torts. Okay. In case of law of torts, we would see there are different types of torts that may be committed. Some are against body of a person, like assault, battery, mayhem. Some might be affecting reputation of a person, like defamation. Same ways, there are there can be a certain type of tort which is uh, like about our men, mind. Okay, it is affecting, in a way, it is affecting our body only. That is nervous shock or mental shock. Okay. So initially, right, in earlier times, this was not recognized as a type of tort. Okay, it was not recognized. Mental shock was not recognized as a type of tort. Because in case of assault, battery, mayhem, we can see something happening. In case of mental shock, it's very difficult to conclude that, okay, because of this certain situation only it has happened. All right, so it was felt that it's difficult to conclude whether it was because of the situation or not. And this mental shock as a type of thought was not recognized for a very long time. Now, in this case, what happened is, it is an English uh, tort law case and it is a very commonly used uh, case as well. So intentional infliction of mental shock, all right? As in intentionally, if you are doing something which is putting the other person in mental shock, are you responsible for that or not? Can a civil suit be filed against you or not? That was the main question here. So when this case was filed, right, at that time, mental shock was not uh, like considered, it was not recognized. This was not covered under law of negligence. A mental shock or nervous shock was not considered as a type of thought. And this is the first case wherein it was recognized. Presently, it is a well-recognized form. In fact, you get it in your law of thought syllabus also, mental shock or nervous shock. It's like a complete topic is there. Okay. Now, what happened in this case is there are three parties. One, Mr. Wilkinson, who is the husband, and he is owner of a pub. His wife, Mrs. Wilkinson, wife of the pub owner, and there is another person who is the defendant, Mr. Downtown. And Mr. Downtown was a regular customer of Mr. Wilkinson's pub. He used to go there regularly. And these are the three parties whom we need to uh, mention in this case. So pub was earlier called as like a public house okay, in England. So this Mr. Wilkinson, he was owner of this uh, pub in London and he used to uh, like take care of the pub as well. Okay. Now, one day he had to go to watch some races. So he left his wife there to take care of the pub and do all the things which are needed. That day also Mr. Downtown came to the pub and he had this knowledge that this owner is not there. So he thought that he will just, you know, like he will crack a joke in front of Mrs. Wilkinson. So he went to her and he falsely said that your husband has been seriously injured in an accident. Okay, intentionally, willingly, he thought that let's play a joke and he said your husband has met with an accident and he is seriously injured and he is lying there on some road he mentioned that in this certain road he is lying there without any help and he has suffered two broken legs okay he, he has broken both of his legs there is no other support he is lying there on the street and you should go there you should grab a cap and you should bring two pillows with you and you should go and bring your husband back because he has suffered uh, injury with those two broken legs. You need to bring two pillows and bring him home. This entire situation was intentional. Like downtown wanted to play a joke and that is why he created this entire story. He narrated it in front of the wife. Now wife was 
so shocked to hear this entire uh, narration that she like lost consciousness and she immediately sent her son and servant in a train to that location where downtown had mentioned that her husband is lying there so she just sent her son and servant in a train to that place and when they reached there they came to know that this entire situation was just like a fake story that downtown had narrated they came to know about it now because of this situation mrs wilkinson suffered severe uh, like health issues okay mentally she suffered severe health issues previously she was not having any such problem okay so it was a shock to her nervous system and she had to vomit and her hair turned white and so much of other like consequences it had happened and it lasted for a few weeks as well this case right mrs wilkinson filed a case against downtown saying that because of your joke i had to suffer a huge amount of loss i sent my kid as well as my servant in train to that place so train expenses plus all the other resulting consequences of this mental shock that i had to undergo for all of that you need to pay compensation okay so she claimed that you need to pay compensation for all this loss that i have suffered because of false representation because of this false story that you had narrated now the main issue in this case was whether compensation could be made for a person's illness and suffering follow, following the false representation made by the defendant it was not like a physical injury that was suffered because of some harm that is caused but it was the injury that the person had suffered mentally the illness the sufferings for that can we claim compensation or not that was the main question which was to be decided because until then mental shock as a type of tort was not recognized now downtown had willfully made false representation to wilkinson intending to cause some physical harm to her by infringing her right to personal safety with no justification for doing so whatever mr downtown did it was intentional act right he wanted to crack a joke so he made up this entire story he narrated it and there is no justification for that as well okay although downtown did not intended to harm intended to cause the harm which was caused it was willful injury right might be never thought that the impact or this consequences would be like so severe might be he never intended it but still what we need to consider is willfully he caused this loss right there was no justification for that also so it is malicious in law the injury caused to wilkinson was not too remote and could have been foreseen and therefore taken to be intended how is it intentional because when you are narrating such a story that the person is lying in the middle of the road without any help both his legs are broken you take a pillow and bring him home that is like a very serious thing which is being narrated right it is a very serious thing and when a person is narrating such a story you can foresee the outcomes also right when you are narrating such a story in front of the wife might be she it would be a very shocking news for her and that thing we can foresee plus this uh, the illness or the consequences that mrs wilkinson had to suffer it was not too remote it was proximate relation was there between the two things because once the story was narrated she vomited her hair turned white this that everything happened at that point in time only before that she was fine so we can also conclude that there is a proximate connection between what has happened so in such a case yes mr downtown did whatever he did intentionally without any lawful justification and these two matters are having connection with it also it's not like too remote that we can ignore as well 
Okay. Is it clear till here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So she had claimed for hundred euros. Okay, as a compensation, she she said that I should be paid hundred euros for all the loss that I have suffered plus the train expenses, train fare which I had to pay for that hundred euros should be paid, and court also. Paid hundred euros, so it is an example wherein intentionally causing harm, right? Intentionally causing harm or creating such a situation wherein a person undergoes a uh, mental shock was for the first time being recognized. And also because it was intentional and everything, again that same what principles we apply, right? To consider the. Uh, relation right whether for a certain act or omission compensation has to be provided or not what do we consider we consider remoteness of damage okay how remotely or closely is the loss related to the situation and based on that we conclude so based on those same grounds only in this case also compensation was being provided and this mental shock or nervous shock as a type of tort also was being recognized for the first time. Okay. Is this part clear? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, like like you said, uh, this is not in like this is uh, mental shock is not a not a kind of tort like was, at that time. Yeah. So, like, how, uh, like, how will they consider it as a like, like a civil crime? Like at that time, they awarded her a uh, hundred yeah. euros. Yeah, because law of torts, right? As such, we don't have any legislation or any written code. It is an uncodified law, and because it is uncodified, it has developed through different case laws only. Okay, whatever different types of torts that you see, different principles which are being applied, everything is as a result of different court decisions only. So same ways, this concept also was recognized in a case itself. Okay, that we say it's not codified. It is. It has developed with time through different uh, judgments only. Okay, so is there any like punishments for that kind? punishment for it is considered as a civil like for wrong. that yeah it is considered as a civil wrong now it is like a well recognized thing you get it under your tort syllabus also now it is well recognized but that time it was like the starting how it got its recognition okay okay and because it is civil there is no as such punishment but yeah compensation will be provided in other Whatever in case of civil right reliefs are available, those will be provided, right? Injunction or whatever might be applicable. Yeah. Okay.